Football Friday here on Birds 365. Thanks for streaming in, everybody. Feel free to hit the like button if you're so desirous. Uh, Johnny Mac in. Johnny Mac out. He's over at Eagle Practice already. But Brian Cameron, uh, managing editor of uh, phillysportsnetwork.com, good enough to jump in with us for a couple of minutes today. Uh, Brian, here's where I want to start with you, because I know you did uh, a post on an article on it. Hassan sure. Reddick and his contract. Um, whether it is a situation, that's the word Coach Siriana used to describe it yesterday or not, only the Eagles and Hassan know for sure, but uh, some Eagle fans not happy because the media brought it up. I kind of uh, bristle at that because Hassan Reddick was the one who brought it up. Uh, and being asked how he judges himself, he said some other players in the league judge by their salary. Well, you opened up the salary door, so now the question can be asked, it was, is this going to be a big deal? Is it going to be a lingering thing? Is it going to be something that people and uh, those that cover the Eagles will be talking about for a week, two weeks, all season? How does it play itself out? Well, the one way it won't play itself, uh, play itself out is the, in the same manner as Terrell Owens, right? We're not going to go through that kind of spiel with Hassan Reddick doing push-ups in the, in the driveway or anything of that sort. No, no driveway um, push-ups? Damn, no driveway I thought I was going to get them again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Eagles are in a un- unique situation, right? They just signed Hassan Reddick last season. And he, I mean, to be honest, like he, he overplayed his contract. The Eagles got him on a steal, and he's right now the, the 15th highest paid red- red rusher in the league. Um, you have guys who didn't perform as well as he did last season. They're, they're getting paid more than $20 million a year. But it, again, it's an interesting situation because you sign Hassan Reddick as mostly a hybrid. He's a linebacker, he's an edge rusher. And in the history of the NFL, like these guys don't really get paid that kind of money because there's no way to to really judge them on how how they're how they're really being played. Um, but I think this gets resolved, and I think it's more so uh, kind of a a gentleman's agreement, right? You know, it's kind of let's let's see how the season plays out. At the end of the season, we could definitely talk about talk about money, talk about an extension. Um, but it's just with the way the culture is of the Eagles, I don't think this will be a lingering issue where you're going to have him holding out. You're going to have him being a little bit more outspoken about it. I think it's going to be kind of with the close behind doors, um, and they'll, they'll definitely resolve the matter in no time. Now, uh, he is in a unique situation because guys outperform their contract all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like Reed Blankenship, undrafted free agent, went in, played pretty successfully when filling in for an injured CJGJ. You would think, he'd, oh, I outperform my contract. Why don't you redo mine? Well, they can't. There are rules against redoing a rookie mm-hmm. contract, and that's why Devontae Smith could go in and say, hey, yeah, how about redoing my contract? He can't. He is a veteran. He's a guy on a se- uh, second contract, so it's something that at least as part of the NFL rules could be done. Hassan has been dealing with a groin issue, and there is some speculation that the groin issue is actually a hold-in, that he's he, – he, termed it himself as a non-injury it's just precautionary that he's not going full board he's not sitting out but he's not going full board just participating in some uh seven on seven stuff like that um do you Mm. think there is a possibility that we're already seeing remnants of uh hassan wanting to get this thing done before the season gets started and get his contract uh ripped up and uh balanced out to where his production is it's a funny coincidence, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's it's just weird. I mean, this this isn't the Eagles of old where you have guys, you know, just doing things like this. And it's just – it was one one great season, right? A, a, a remarkable season with, um, with Hassan Reddick. I feel like the Eagles don't really reach the Super Bowl without his play. Um, and he was very a very key ingredient for this defense. Going forward, though, it's just – again, the Eagles are in a tough pickle. I mean, you have guys who could possibly be just as good as Hassan Reddick in the future with Nolan Smith. Uh, you have Josh Sweat come into his own, and you just drafted Jalen Carter as well. Um, if it does have to get done, I I don't see it being a forceful issue. I don't see it where Hassan's actually going to hold out. He seems like a more of a, a stand-up guy after everything he's been through. Um, he did take a hometown discount, which I'm pretty sure he's very aware of. Like, you, you came here on a, a three-year, $45 million. But let, let me ask you that. Let, let, me, let me interrupt you there, because uh, you're not yeah. the first one to do this, and – uh, I disagree with where else I read. Do you think there was a really a better offer out there that somebody else put more than three and 45 on the table and Hassan said, 
nah, I want to go back to Florida. That's my home. I'm going to hang with my homies. Uh, I'll turn down more money elsewhere. To me, that's the definition of hometown discount. I don't know that that was offered to him elsewhere, that he came to the Eagles because he wanted to come home. If you've got any inside info, info that uh, you know a team put more on the table, please share it with us. But I just don't know that that was the case. I don't think so much that was the case. I do believe that there were definitely um, other teams interested at the, at the, um, at the time. But this, it, when I say hometown discount, obviously he's coming back home. He's a Camden native. Um, but the, the situation at hand was he was coming back, coming to a team where it was it was a, a stability, and he just came from Carolina. Carolina was not going to compete. Just came from Arizona before that. Arizona was not going to compete, and the Eagles were in prime position to to be on the uprise. And he joined the club with that with that in mind. Um, now for the deal, I, I can't say if there was any other bigger deals. I would, right. I would think, you know, um, a guy of his talent definitely had offers on the table after coming off back-to-back seasons with double digit sacks. Um, but I also think, you know, it, it wasn't a TJ Watt kind of offer. It wasn't a, you know, a Miles um, Garrett kind of offer. It was just probably in the ballpark of 50 mil, 40 something mil. Um, and he, he, he jumped ship with the Eagles. And I'm glad everybody here in Philadelphia is glad that he did because he had the season that yeah, he had absolutely. last year. <laughs> and that's why we're talking about a potential redo on his contract. Fee. If you look at just one year, he surely uh, earned, earned that uh, for the numbers that he put up for the Eagles. All right. Uh, you mentioned Eagles on the uptick team that look could get that it could get better or surely did. Uh, tied in the Super Bowl 10 seconds ago. You can't get much closer without actually having a parade. Um, but now they have to try and repeat. Repeat as NFC champions, repeat being in the Super Bowl, and maybe a little change to the narrative at the end as to the final score of the game. Uh, we know the history of the National Football League, not easy to do, not easy to get back to the Super Bowl the year before you go and come up just short. Why is this team going to be capable of doing that? Why do you believe the Eagles can get back to the Super Bowl two years running? So being around this team, um, I, I stopped by training camp on Friday, and it was a different dynamic. This was a team that's just all business right now. You know, you don't feel the effects of Jonathan Gannon being lost. You don't feel the effects of J- Shane Steichen moving on. You don't feel the effects of them missing any players from that key Super Bowl run. This team is is primed to to make a run back to where they where they just were because to them it, it feels like it's unfinished business. The season hasn't ha- hasn't finished yet, and you can tell like they're right now they're. Their presence right now, it, it seems like it's in midseason form with how they're handling everything. Everything's very routine. Everything's very um, structured. Everything's just very well put together for a team that's probably going to be the best team in the NFC. I mean, there's not many teams that can really compete with them. And when people mention the 49ers, yes, the 49ers, they have a ton of talent. But the 49ers don't have what the Eagles have, and that's a quarterback that can actually take them to the to the promised land. Um, so it, it seems like it's a wide open field for them. It seems like they could definitely make the make the move to repeating again. And Nick Sirianni has done a tremendous job of keeping his team focused, keeping his team um, focused on the matter at hand. It's all business right now, and you can actually sense that with this with this team. All right, we talked about the linebacker position and the fact that uh, uh, their main linebacker, starting linebacker, Nicobe Dean, who played all of thirty two snaps, went down with an injury yesterday, and all of a sudden. The pickings looked a little slim at the linebacker position. Um, if Ben Van Sumeren isn't ready to step in and play for this team, or Sean Bradley is not quite anything more than a special teams guy, somebody's going to have to play linebacker if they have an injury. Um, will Howie Roseman get aggressive here? And when I say aggressive, I mean make a trade for a player prior to the final cutdown. If they wait till the cutdown and then they're going to try and grab the best available one that does get released by another team, so be it. Or did the Eagles see an even bigger need that they can't afford to wait and then kind of cross your fingers and hope that that type of player is out there? Will Howie Roseman get aggressive and try and make a trade for a linebacker before we get to final cuts? I think it's a matter of picking your poison. Uh, right now, the, the Eagles have the same situation they had last year where the linebacker group is not as um, good. The safety group is not as good as well. Uh, we've seen that Nick Sariani mentioned that the safety, there's a safety spot wide open and that even Kayvon Wallace is in the mix for, um, to possibly start as well. Uh, so it's a matter of picking your poison. I personally think they should go for linebacker just because you want to you want that second level to be secure, right? If Nicobe goes down, are you really going to trust in uh, Christian Ellis, uh, Nicholas Morrow to, to lead that core? 
Um, you have guys like Devin White who's expressed interest of, of moving on. You have um, Patrick Queen who has a very unique situation in Baltimore. And the Eagles have the draft capital to make it, make it happen. I mean, whether it costs that the same second round pick or whether it costs, you know, a third or a fourth, whatever case may be later on, um, they had the draft capital to make it happen. But I think it's a matter of like, what's more important to you? Is the safety more important or is the linebackers? Um, it doesn't seem like they're completely sold on Terrell Edmonds if, he, if that safety um, safety spot is still open. Reed Blankenship, we know he's holding, he's definitely holding a spot. And you're not going to hand it to Sidney Brown just yet just because he's, he's an improving commodity. He's, he's a rookie. Um, so it's, it's a matter of picking your poison. How he uh, hasn't really made much moves for linebackers in the past, which has haunted Eagles fans for a very long time. Uh, but if they are to, to make one, I think, you know, it's Patrick Queen or, De- or Devin White. Safeties, there's not too many options on board, in my opinion, for to make them a, a trade for. I mean, Jeremy Chen doesn't like he's leaving Carolina anytime soon. Uh, Antoine Winfield is probably the, the, the second best option in, in that case, but we don't know what the Bucks are trying to do with him. So it's it's truly just a matter of picking your poison with the Eagles. Here's where I would question Howie Roseman, and I don't like questioning Howie Roseman because he's a very good general manager. Will he make the decision based on – the Eagles' overall evaluation of the how much stock they put into the position, or will he base the decision on the guys that are on the roster right now and how you evaluate them and how you think they could step in and play if need be? I hope he judges by what's on the roster rather than, well, here's what we generally evaluate linebackers. Here's the importance we put on safeties. I get it. Every team does that with every position. The Eagles, we certainly understand that much better because we evaluate them day in and day out. Do you think how we will allow the guys who are here to dictate more than the way the Eagles have done their business in the past and the amount of importance they put on a position? I think the first one's a, it's a very political way for how we look at it, right? I mean, that's what we get from him in his press conferences. It's like, okay, you know, we have these guys that can fill in, but we know deep in how he's mind, he's already trying to, to figure out how to how to steal a, a hot commodity off any team. Um, I think a deal does get done at some point this this month. Um, we saw Johnson Gardner Johnson get traded for in August last season. How he has a knack of getting these great guys later in, in the off season. And I think a deal definitely does get done. And I think he's at the point where, you know, you need a linebacker. Like, you need somebody if N'Kobe goes down or you need somebody next to N'Kobe. And a veteran presence next to N'Kobe was – would be a genius move because you, you're securing a position that's that's very, very important in this game that you've negated for so long. Um, I don't think that the guys on the roster are going to dictate this. I think the matter of fact is just this team wants to get back to the Super Bowl, right? So you, it's either you're all in or you're not at this point. All right. Uh, I want to ask you about another position that, again, Eagles don't put the biggest stock in, but they are not alone here. Uh, one of the main talking points during this offseason has been the devalued running back position across the league, not just Philadelphia Eagles, but across the league. Um, Eagles have five running backs in their room right now. And if you want to take it six to add Brooks Kennedy, sorry, Brooks, your upside is practice squad. You're not making a 53 man roster. Last year, they went with three running backs all year. Trey Sermon was on the 53, but he was basically inactive every single game. He played all of two games. Um, this year they have an extra because they let Miles Sanders walk and added both Rashad Penny and uh, DeAndre Swift. So the numbers get crunched even more. The coach again yesterday decided to, again, un- unsolicited talk up Trey Sermon that he looks great in practice. And we were so happy when we got Trey and we were pissed when the 49ers drafted him. He goes out of his way to sing Trey Sermon's praise. He must like the guy a lot. Uh, which is more power to him. I I don't know whether Trey Sermon will or won't have a productive Eagles career. Uh, Do they think they can trade one of those guys? Do they think they're going to be able to make a deal? Add that as a sweetener to get their hands on a linebacker. The problem with that is everybody's devalued running backs in the NFL. So I don't know that adding a running back to a trade actually adds anything to the trade. How is running back going to play out for the Eagles this year? I think it's one of their uh, more loaded positions. I mean, oh, you yeah. have so many guys with unique abilities. You have Boston Scott, who, I mean, shows up twice a year, right, against the Giants. Um, you have Kenny Gainwell, who I, can't, coming into this offseason, thought he would be the guy. Um, either he'll be the one or the two. And he showed tremendous promise in the playoffs um, with his, his receiving ability. 
Then DeAndre Swift, who is just a Swiss Army knife, which is phenomenal to have. Uh, Rashad Penny, who was signed for, for pennies on the dollar. Um, it just feels like if, if there's going to be an odd man out, right? The way Nick Sirianni is praised Trey Sermon, it's kind of like one of those things where either you're praising him to bring up his value or you're praising him to, to move on from a Rashad Penny or a case may be at the offseason. Um, they're in a very interesting predicament, especially with, with teams, you know, teams like the Colts who are in a situation where their top guy doesn't want to play for them. He wants to leave. You know, those guys are going to be fishing for, for, you know, any kind of player that they can get. I, I just – at the end of the day, I, it feels like the, the running back room is going to end up with four. I think it end up with Penny, Swift, Gamewell, and Scott. I think the Trey Sermon hype is just, is that what it is? It's, it's just hype for the moment. Um, he probably ends up on the practice squad because, I mean, no other team – went fishing from last year. Uh, mm. The Eagles, I think they're just, they're just, they're doing their due diligence to, to fish around. All right. Let me ask you about the quarterback. And John and I marvel at this all the time because uh, we've been doing birds 365 for a couple of years now. All we ever talked about was Jalen Hurts from the end of his first year up until uh, the, the start of last year. Is he good enough? Did they mess up? I, uh, how badly did Carson Wentz screw them? Turning it over to a guy who was drafted to be a backup. In general. And they had the season that he had, and he looked pretty good. And they sold us on, he's our quarterback going forward. But they also went out and tried to acquire Russell Wilson. They also went out and tried to talk to Sean Watson into coming here. So they weren't as assured as they like to make you believe that that's the case. And then Jalen goes out and has this unbelievably great year and is runner up for the MVP. So now we don't even talk about it. Once they got the contract done, Jalen Hurts became an afterthought. Well, we know we're great at the quarterback. Move on. Let's worry about everything else. A complete nothing burger this week. Now, this is just me, and I need your take on it as well. Peter King was in town, asked Jalen Hurts about the picture on his phone. Um, he's got a picture of himself walking off the field with the red confetti coming down after the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And Peter asked him about it. And Jalen came up with a very abrupt answer. I won't talk about it. I don't even like the fact that you people know what's on my phone. Jalen Hurts is about as cool and composed a character as you know. And I didn't see video on this, but I certainly read everything that Jalen said. He seemed like really perturbed about this i think it's a complete nothing burger who cares what pictures on his phone if he uses it as motivation good on him and if he does just say hey it's motivation to get me the green confetti for next year's phone picture why did this become a big deal we're in the age of social media i mean social media they they zoom into everything they they, they cut out everything they try to find anything they, they, they can to, to really um Piss anybody, plenty, piss anybody off. And we know from, from seeing Jalen Hurts, he's a very private guy. Jalen doesn't really like talking about much outside of football. Um, and I, I get it. You know, you, you sign this big deal. You're, you know, you're definitely the guy. You're doing everything you can to, 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 bring up, um, to bring up a city, right, to bring up a team back to, back to his glory days, right? And, yep. you know, you're, you don't have any privacy. And it's just it's, – it's, it comes with the territory, right? You're, you're a top quarterback in the NFL. You're gonna be a hot commodity. You're gonna be wanted. You want it on every corner, on every block, and you're gonna be asked about. Um, I definitely get where he's coming from. You know, his his um his loss of privacy in that matter is just you know that's something that was probably very intimate to him. Something that he used um you know personally to to make sure that he can get back to where he where he wants to get back because he knows now that he got there um last year. Uh, so I, I definitely get why he, he was mad, but I think this is like you're saying this is a nothing burger that just needs to be swept under the rug and just let the guy live, right? I mean. He didn't want to be part of the, the NFL, um, the, the quarterback special on Netflix. So it's kind of like he's showing you, like, hey, guys, when I'm on the field, I'm on the field. And when I'm off the field, I don't exist. And I was uh, elated that he decided to skip that because that was my only concern for Jalen this offseason. Not that he wasn't mm -hmm. going to be driven. Not that he wasn't going to be prepared. Uh, not that he was going to get a big head about getting a big contract. I just thought he might be pulled in too many different directions. And he's as nice a guy as he is that he might have a tough time saying no. Oh, he said no yeah. to the quarterback thing on that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good job, Jalen. Thank you very much. Love to see you. If if you did it, I'd watch every single episode, but I'm actually more happy that you didn't do it. All right. Uh, another one of the posts that you put up a while ago that I liked that I want to let you uh, double down on was accountability. 
the Eagles as a team uh, have had it kind of uh, seared into them by the head coach. Everybody's accountable. And I like the fact that Sirianni was a little vocal in his first couple of practices. Hey, if we're not going long, we better go right. We better go hard. We better mm-hmm. go strong. That there's a lot of accountability for the uh, Eagles coming into the season off the year they had this year. How do you judge that? It's it's funny because as you're saying, I'm, I'm thinking about the Doug Peterson days, right? I'm thinking about the, the leaks, the Alshon Jeffrey stuff, the, the Carson Wentz stuff. Um, Doug Peterson was a, was a heavy players coach, but he was also a great coach. Nick Sirianni is a players coach, but he also found a way to, to really keep everybody in line professionally. You know, we're, we're a family, you know, we're, we're, we're here to have fun, but at the same time, we're here to do a job. And you feel that from even Sean Desai now, like we're here to show, you know, show the NFL who Philly is, who the city is, but we're also here to make sure that we get the job done. And they, they have buy-in from, from the guys to the bo- at the bottom of the roster, um, to the guys at the top of the roster. And that's that's huge. I mean, you have veterans like Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey falling in line with a guy that mocked. Um... Oh, did we lose uh, Brian? I think we uh, dropped his feet. All right. Uh, we'll take a quickie time out here. Hopefully we can get Brian back up. I got one or two more questions to get to him if we can. Jody Mack here with you on Birds 365. Come right back. Got him back, back here with you on Birds 365. We dropped Brian's uh, feed for just a second. We had to get him back. Do have a couple more questions. I want to run by him, uh, managing editor of the Philadelphia Sports Network.com. Uh, I need a prediction from you, Brian. If either Patrick Johnson or Derek Barnett is going to make the Philadelphia Eagles, which one do you think has a better chance? Patrick Johnson, hands down. <laughs> um, Derek Ryan, it, it you know he's definitely the the apple of um how he's eye from that that one draft, but it just hasn't panned out for Barnett here. Um, he did have a couple of great moments, but it's it's time to you know to cut ties in my opinion at least. As do I, uh, and I gotta been saying that for a couple <laughs> of years now. But uh, I guess he's a good guy, and they love his work ethic, and he's beloved in the room, but. Sorry, the production should come first. Do, do you think there's any team around the National Football League that'll give the Eagles any conditional type of pick for him? Now, he redid his contract. Now, maybe that's because he didn't want to go anywhere else and he wanted to make – and Eagles said, we can find a spot on the roster for you, but not at the dollar value that you have right now. Would it be harsh to turn around and either trade him or cut him after they get him to redo his contract, or is that just the business of football? I think it's just the business of football, but I think they're, it's Howie, right? At the end of the day, you, you, Howie could trade you know a bag of donuts for all, all pro caliber player. At the end of the day, so I wouldn't put it past him that he can you know move Barnett to a team like possibly um, like the Vikings again or some some other um, club in that kind of position. Uh, what can, what, they can, what can they get back for it? It'd probably be a, a late round pick, but I think the Eagles, you know, will value doing that more than just letting Barnett go for nothing. All right. Uh, one other prediction for you. We talked about the Eagles running back room being crowded. Trey Sermon, how's he going to fit in? Uh, we've also seen throughout practice early here this year that they've been working on getting the running backs more involved in the passing game. They did very little of it last year. Sirianni specifically said, hey, you work with what you work with, which means they didn't love their running backs. They've added DeAndre Swift. They expect Kenny Gainwell to be better. How much is backs out of the backfield going to be a part of the Eagle passing game this year? I think it's going to be a very, very, very crucial part of the offense. Um, Mm. You're expanding the offense. You're giving – Jalen Hurts more weaponry than um, than he had last season. And from seeing DeAndre Swift so far, he's going to be very heavily involved. And this this allows you to be so creative on offense now. Like you're talking about how creative, you know, Doug and Frank were when uh, when they had Darren Sproles. Um, this could definitely be a, a great wrinkle in the offense. And I think you're going to see a lot of it more than more than more than um, you, you'd expect, honestly. What do you need to see? And we'll get uh, through the rest of the week of practice before you know it. First preseason game will be up. The uh, dual practices, uh, the Eagles have a couple of them this year with the Browns and with the Colts. Um, what do you think Sirianni is looking to establish? Uh, as finite a detail as you want, or just generally speaking, 
What do you think the Eagles have to do between now and the opener against the Patriots in September? No, did we lose Brian's volume? I'm here. Sorry about that. I don't hey, have myself. No on problem. Mute. <laughs> uh, I think they just have to get the, their defense in order, and I don't mean that in a very uh, disrespectful manner or anything like that. I think it's just a matter of getting your the who's going to be your guy at each position, right? Who's going to be the, the starting safeties? Um, I think going into week one, you don't want to have any second thoughts of who you're going into into battle with um, in the front line. Do the uh, yeah, but there's several positions on this team that they rotate and they use depth as a tool. Certainly, the defensive line being one of them. And I think the Eagles have uh, who was it? Bucky Brooks from the NFL said the Eagles' defensive line is the number one positional group, offense or defense, in the entire National Football League. And oh, by the way, I agree with Bucky there. So it's not just one guy; it's several different guys. So then it falls to the coaching staff to deploy them as best they can in just the right mm -hmm. way. That's another key aspect of uh, some of the changes in the coaching staff. Sirianni's talking it up pretty good, but he was very tight with both Gannon and with Shane Steichen. You think the coach has unfettered belief in his coaching staff doing the substituting during a uh, game when you got to get certain guys in, certain guys out? It seems like it so far. It seems like he's letting um, Sean decide, kind of take the reins and do what he has to do um, while giving as much input as he possibly feels comfortable with. Um, I think that's the great thing about Sirianni is that the, his his faith and his trust in his guys right off the bat is going to, you know, is, it pays off for him. Um, he trusted Jonathan Gannon in the Super Bowl, right? Um, he trusted Shane Steichen with, with his offense and everything just panned out perfectly. You don't see too many coaches kind of taking a back seat w from play calling just to kind of monitor the, the team as a whole. But that's, uh, I think, one of the strengths of Sirianni is that he had confidence enough in his coaches and himself to be your CEO coach, and it worked out damn well with a Super Bowl appearance last year. All right, saved maybe the most important question for last. There's a wink involved here uh, because Johnny, Johnny Mac doesn't like talking about uniform colors. But this past <laughs> week we saw the reaction of Eagle fans with the return of the Kelly Green uniforms. I happen to be a big fan. I, I'm not an over-the-top, oh, my God, yeah, you didn't find me on that line standing waiting to get a Kelly <laughs> Green jersey. I may get one at some point, but uh, but I do appreciate the fans' appreciation for the Kelly Green. Does it have any effect on the Philadelphia? Other than it excites the fans, puts a couple extra dollars in Jeff Lurie's pocket, uh, some of the players shoot uh, Josh Sweat all right without ever having wear, wearing it once in the game. Said, "Oh, this should be our number one color." Does it have any effect on a team whatsoever, Brian? I think so. I mean, listen, going um, looking your best on game day is is it means everything to these guys, right? And now I, it feels like the Kelly Green jersey is is up there in that um in that in that upper echelon of, of looking your best. Um, the nostalgia behind it, the the look of it, how distinctive it is, how unique it is, I think it's going to – it could definitely give that, the Eagles a little bit of an edge. I mean, if you're playing good while looking good, there's, there's no better feeling in the world. <laughs> Which means more, looking good or your Madden rating? Because those two things seem to be high on the player's priority list. If you're telling me looking good is that right, the only other thing that can rival it would be your Madden rating. They seem to care about that uh, a ton. Which is more important to players? In my opinion, I think looking good. I think the Madden rating oh, is a little bit overstated. Oh, man, you are. You're buying into this. They're going to be pumped I, up and play better than ever because they're in Kelly. <laughs> I love it. Um, <clears throat> the Madden rating, is, it is what it is, right? I mean, they, they haven't gotten it wrong. I mean, they haven't gotten Madden right in how many years? Mm -hmm. So the Eagles got the Kelly Green right, you know, the first try right there. So I think looking good matters a lot more to them right now. Brian, great stuff. Do me a favor. Check them out. One of the websites I go to every single day before I prepare for Birds 365 is phillysportsnetwork.com. Thank you very much for hopping in. You know we're going to have you on play during the season. Thanks for doing it with us today. I appreciate it, Jody. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure. Brian Cameron from uh, phillysportsnetwork.com. I did not expect that answer. I thought he was going to go, yeah, they like to look good. Everybody like, oh, Jody, don't you like to look good? Yeah. Come on. 
I don't really care anymore. But uh, as long as I know what I'm talking about, you guys can understand what I'm talking about. That's what I care about. I'm uh, the, the, uh, I'm past the care what I look stage. But he put a heavy emphasis on it that, yeah, it can actually rise to the level of you can play better because you look better. Didn't think Brian was going there. I hope he's right because there were some guys that seemed to be quite pumped up by the new Kelly Green. I think it's more for the fans than it is for the players, but that's just me. Uh, however, it came down, I uh, give credit to Jeff Laurie, who uh, worked hard to be able to get the entire Eagle uniform back, Kelly Green jerseys and helmets included. They needed to wait until the NFL wised up enough to say, yeah, why are we holding back on the helmets? Why are we putting restrictions on helmets? We need to do away with that. And it did. And the Eagles were able to get the old school uniform back. That's one thing I surely am is an old school kind of guy. Uh, I'll be looking forward to when the Eagles don the Kelly Green this year. I'll be looking forward to talking to my guy, John McMullen, on Monday. He'll be back. I believe the Eagles are off tomorrow, which means practice on Sunday, which means McMullen will be here for a full show on Monday. Yeah, very much looking forward to that. Um, John may be on 24-7 tonight, so make sure you check back here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Thanks to uh, Brian Cameron for hopping on, and a good job out of Bill Colarulo, who will be doing a Monday night uh, podcast here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel as well. A uh, guy who's jumping into the media biz after uh, being a lawyer for a while. His uh, podcast, Legal Hands to the Face, is something uh, you might want to check out here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Myself and Johnny Mac, Mac and Mac guys, will be back here with Birds 365 in two and two days, that is.